What's up? Welcome to the stack. Welcome back. If you've been here before, I'm Neon Mushroom, and today we got some more Commander EDH gameplay for you guys. But before we get into it, I do have a few caveats I have to make. And the main one is if you are a fan of milling in EDH and you're a fan of the card Ruin Crab, uh, you're going to be triggered today because we misread the card. You might remember the most recent upload. There was a Bruvac deck that used the card Ruin Crab. It only came up once, but it's supposed to mill all of your opponents instead of just a one like Hedron Crab does. But this game was recorded in the same recording session that the game that the Bruvac deck was recorded in. And so we just missed it for that whole day. We messed it up. We haven't played a lot with that card yet. So if you want to retain your sanity, pretend that Ruin Crab is actually Hedron, Hedron Crab for the purposes of this video. Other than that, another little quick thing before we get into the video is live streaming. We did a test gameplay live stream last week, or this week actually, it's Friday, and it went really, really well. Um, there were some things that we needed to fix up, but I was made aware of what they are, and I think we've solved some of those problems. Sunday, around noon, Eastern, we live in uh, the Detroit area, so Eastern time around noon, look forward to another live stream that's going to be a bit longer and um, hopefully a little bit better. That's all I have for you guys before the game. Let's go ahead and take a look at who's playing, what they decided to play, and what hands they decided to keep, in addition to the normal upkeep stuff. As always, if you like this show or any of our other shows on YouTube, liking, sharing, and subscribing helps us out immensely. If you like our content and don't mind that extra mile, you can always support us over on Patreon, over at patreon.com backslash MTG the stack. Like Michael Guzman. Comment down below any of your thoughts and feelings, and we hope you enjoy the show. Okay, first up we have Guy Scott playing his Zakama Primal Calamity build. Most of you have seen this deck before. It's a big mana combo deck that wants to spend the early game accelerating on mana in order to cast Zakama out of the command zone in conjunction with Sanctum of Eternities to gain infinite mana, infinite life, and destroy everyone's permanents, and eventually win with something like a Shivan Gorge. Guy is going to be keeping a 7 card hand, including a Blind Obedience, a Sylvan Scrying, a Trace of Abundance, Wolf Willow Haven, a Stomping Ground, a Basic Forest, and a Canopy Vista. Up next we have Foley returning to the channel with a Phoenix God of Deception build. Now this is going to be a pretty run of the mill mill deck. It wants to use Phoenix's activated ability in order to use his creatures and their high toughnesses to mill his opponents for as much as possible at a given time. Foley had to mulligan to 6 keeping a hand of Blood Chief Ascension, Bruvac the Grand Eloquent, a Ruin Crab, which remember we're pretending is Hedron Crab, a Watery Grave, an Island, a Swamp, and the card that he had to put on the bottom was a Cherix. Next up we have Trigger playing the partner pairing of Jeska, Thrace Reborn, and Thrasios Triton Hero. This is a Lands Matter deck that wants to use something like Valakut or Field of the Dead to close out the game while using Thrasios as a value engine out of the command zone and using Jeska as a board wipe out of the command zone. Trigger has opted to keep a 7 card hand, including a Polluted Delta, Cinderglade, Wooded Foothills, a Gush, Cyclonic Rift, Fierce Guardianship, and a Crufix God of Horizons. Last up we have me, and I'm going to be playing the partner pairing of Sakashima of a Thousand Faces and Krark the Thumbless. This is going to be a Storm style deck that wants to use Sakashima in conjunction with clones in my deck to make as many copies of Krark the Thumbless as possible in order to storm off with something as simple as a Lightning Bolt. I will also be keeping a 7 card hand, including a Blood Moon, a Fierce Guardianship, a Seething Song, Simeon's Spirit Guide, Mystic Remora, Shatter Skull Smashing, and a Cascade Bluffs. Card games uh, and uh, 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 No switching for Calvin. One, two, three, flip. Guys first. Hey! Okay, guy won card game, so he's going to start by drawing a card and dropping a Canopy Vista as his land for turn, and I'll pass to Foley, who's going to draw and play a basic Island as his land for turn. He's going to tap for one and play a Ruin Crab, and like I said at the beginning, if you want to keep your sanity, just pretend it's a Hedron Crab. Trigger's going to draw and play Polluted Delta as his land for turn. He'll pass to me, and I'll bolt in Shatter Skull the Hammer Pass. I'll immediately tap it for red, exile a Simeon Spear Guide from my hand to play Krog the Thumbless, and I'll just pass the turn back to Guy. Guy's going to go ahead and untap and draw his card for turn, and in this first main phase, he's going to play a basic forest as his land for turn. Then I'll tap for two mana, and he's going to cast a Trace of Abundance. He'll put it onto his basic forest and just pass the turn to Foley. Foley's going to draw a card, play a basic swamp, triggering the Ruin Crab, which we're pretending is Hedron Crab, so he chooses Guy to mill three cards from the top of his library. Then Foley's going to tap for one mana and cast Blood Chief Ascension. With nothing else, he'll pass the turn to Trigger, but before he can, Trigger wants to fetch, dropping to 39 for his Steam Vents. Then he's going to untap and draw his card for turn. 
In his first main phase, he'll lead on a basic forest, then he'll tap out and cast one of his commanders, Thrasios, Triton Hero. No one has any responses, so with nothing else, he'll just pass the turn to me, and I'll draw my card and play a Cascade Bluffs as my land for turn. Then I'm going to filter Cascade Bluffs for blue blue, and I'll use one blue to cast Serum Visions, which triggers Krark, so I'm going to flip a coin, and I actually end up losing this flip, so it gets put back into my hand. After that, we use the other floating blue mana to play a Mystic Remora, and just pass the turn to Guy. He'll untap and draw his card for turn, and he's going to play a basic mountain as his land for turn. Then he's going to start to feed the fish, he taps for two, and casts Wolf Willow Haven onto his forest, which triggers the fish, and I'll draw a card. Then he's going to tap that land that's enchanted with two enchantments, and he's going to cast Blind Obedience, also not paying for the fish, so I'll draw another card. With nothing else, he'll just pass the turn to Foley, who's going to untap and draw his card for turn, and he'll play a basic island, triggering the Not Ruin Crab, so he's going to choose Guy to mill three cards. After that, he's going to tap all of his available mana, and he's going to cast Bruvac the Grand Eloquent, and with nothing else, we're going to pass the turn back to Trigger, who will untap and draw his card. He's going to play a tapped Cinderglade in his first main phase, and then he's going to head to combat and attack Guy with the Thrasios, who will remember that the Bruvac comes into play tapped because of Blind Obedience. Guy has no blocks, so he's going to drop down to 39 and 1 commander damage. After that, we'll go to my turn. I'm going to sacrifice the Mystic Remora and draw my card for turn. Then, in my first main phase, I'll filter for blue blue and I'll cast that Serum Visions again. This triggers Krark, so I'll flip, and this one I win, so I'm going to copy Serum Visions. So I'm now going to cast Serum Visions twice after choosing the cards that I want to draw and putting the ones that I don't on the bottom of my library. I find my land drop for turn. In this case, it'll be a basic island, and then I'll head to combat and attack Guy with Krark the Thumbless. He has no blocks, so he drops to 37. That triggers Blood Chief Ascension. I'll move to discard, and we'll pass the turn back to Guy, where he'll draw a card, and I'll tap for 3 mana to cast Sylvan Scrying, and he will extort it with the Blind Obedience. This will have all of us taking 1 life, and he will gain 3. Then he's going to search his library for a copy of Temple of the False God. Him not searching for Sanctum of Eternity is setting off alarm bells in all our heads. He's going to drop Stomping Ground Tapped as his land for turn, and pass to Foley, where he's going to draw and play Watery Grave Tapped, triggering Not Ruin Crab. So Guy's going to mill 6 cards because there's a Bruvac in play. Then Foley's going to tap for 3, and he's going to drop to Furious Tutelage. He's going to draw off the Enter the Battlefield trigger, which triggers the Tutelage again. That's going to have him milling Guy for 4 cards because it's doubled by Bruvac. After all that, Trigger's going to drop Windswept Heath as his land for turn, and head into combat, attacking Guy for 1 commander damage. Then, Trigger will fetch with the Windswept Heath, he's going to go get a Tropical Island, and then he'll straight away activate Thrasios. He'll scry, decide he doesn't like what's on top of his library, then he'll reveal a City of Brass, which comes into play tapped off of the Thrasios, and with nothing else he'll try to pass to me, but first I'll cast Brainstorm. That's going to trigger my Krark, I'll flip a coin and fail so the Brainstorm goes back to my hand, then I'll untap and draw my card for turn. I'll play a Command Tower as my land for turn, and then I'm going to tap for 4 mana and cast my second commander, Sakashima. I'm going to use it to clone my Krark, and it comes into play tap because of the Blind Obedience. Then I'll pass the turn to Guy. Guy will draw his card for turn and play a Temple of the False God as his land for turn. Then I'll tap for 3 mana in order to cast a Satyr Enchanter, which resolves. Then he's going to tap for 5 more mana in order to cast a Mirari's Wake, which triggers the Satyr Enchanter, and I'll draw a card. With nothing else, he'll pass the turn back to Foley, who untaps and draws, triggering the Tutelage, having Guy mill 4 cards. Then he'll play a basic island as his land for turn, triggering the Not Ruin Crab, that's going to have Guy milling 6. Then Foley's finally going to tap for 5 and cast Phoenix, God of Deception, out of the command zone. We'll pass to Trigger's turn, where he'll draw, drop a Wooded Foothills as his land for turn, and then he'll fetch, dropping to 36 life, and he'll go get a Taiga and put it into play. Then he's going to tap for 3 mana in order to cast one of his commanders, Jessica Thrice Reborn. I have a response, I'm going to cast Fierce Guardianship for free, triggering both of my Krarks. Trigger also has a response, he'll tap for 3 to cast his own Fierce Guardianship, realizing he doesn't need to tap for 3 because he has a commander, and then I'm going to respond once again, I'm going to cast Deflecting Swat for free, because I control one of my commanders. Dude, he's got the good hand. Oh! <laughs> Luigi's my friend. So let's go back to my hand. And I'm going to copy it. Oh my god. After getting the best possible set of flips, I get to copy Deflecting Swat and put it back in my hand. That's going to cause his Fierce Guardianship to target the Deflecting Swat and Fizzle. Then I'm going to flip the coins for Fierce Guardianship. I will also get a Heads and a Tails again, so I'll counter Jessica and I'll get the Fierce Guardianship back in my hand. With nothing else, Trigger passes to me, where I'll untap, draw my card for turn, and then I'm going to tap for 3 mana and cast Jessica's Will. Trigger has 6 cards in hand, so if this resolves, I'll get 6 red mana. First we have to trigger the Krarks. The first flip is Tail, so it goes back to my hand. And the second flip is Heads, so I copy it. This is going to have me exiling the top 3 cards
cards of my library and making six red mana. I'll play an island out of those exiled cards as my land for turn. Then I'm gonna use three of that red mana to recast the Jessica's Will. But in response, Foley's gonna tap his Ruin Crab in order to mill me for a grand total of six because Bruvac's in play. Then I'll do the same thing, but with Bruvac to mill me for eight cards after that. With nothing else, we go to resolve the Krog triggers. We're gonna flip a coin and the first one is gonna be tail, so it goes back to my hand. The second one is heads, so I get to copy it again, making six red mana, and then I get to exile the top three again. I'll use three of my nine red mana to cast a Twinning Staff, which comes into play tapped because of the Blind Obedience, and then I'll cast Jessica's Will again, triggering both Krarks again. I flip Tails, and then I flip another Tails. This puts it back in my hand, and I'll use my last three red mana to cast it again. I'm going to trigger both Krarks and flip Tails, and then I'm going to flip Tails again. Putting it back in my hand, this will effectively end my turn, so I'll try to move my end step. But Trigger has an action first, he wants a single target Cyclonic Rift, Guy's Marari's Wake. If that didn't make that much sense to you, I'll explain that play at the end of the game. I'll discard a card for turn, and we'll move over to Guy's turn, where he'll untap. And on his upkeep, Trigger wants to submerge his Satyr Enchanter, because Trigger controls an island and Guy controls a forest, so he does it for free. Then Guy's going to draw his card, he's going to tap for 5 mana and try to recast Marari's Wake. I have a response to this. I'm going to for free cast Fierce Guardianship, and that's going to trigger both Krarks. I'll flip a coin, first one's tails, and then I'll flip another coin, second one's also tails, so it goes back to my hand. I'll cast it again for free. This is going to have me flipping two coins, the first one's heads, and the second one is also heads. This is the worst possible outcome, because it does counter the Mirari's Wake, but then the Fierce Guardianship finally hits the graveyard. The guy will then play a Sanctum of Eternity as his land for turn, and he'll tap for three to redeploy the Seder Enchanter. With nothing else, he'll pass the turn to Foley, who will untap, and his draw for turn will trigger the Teferi's Tutelage. He's going to have Guy mill a total of four cards thanks to the Bruvac. He'll drop Darkwater Catacombs as his land for turn, triggering the Not Ruin Crab in conjunction with the Bruvac to mill Guy for six. Then he's going to tap for six mana total to cast Sire of Stagnation. With nothing else, he'll pass the turn to Trigger, who will draw a card for turn, and then he's going to float two blue mana, and he's going to cast Gush for free by bouncing two islands to his hand. That'll have him drawing two cards, and then he's going to play a tap Steam Vents as his land for turn, triggering Sire's Stagnation. Calvin will have to exile the top two cards of his library, and this will cause Foley to draw a card. That'll mill Guy for four, and then Foley draws his second card, milling Guy for an additional four. After this point, Trigger's going to use the two blue floating mana he has and tap for two more mana to cast Escape Shift. I have a response. I'm going to tap for two blue and cast Counterspell, triggering both Karks. Trigger wants to tap for one green after this point in order to cast Nature's Claim, targeting my Twinning Staff. I'll respond by casting Deflecting Swat. This also triggers both my Karks. I'll start to trigger the Karks and flip coins. The first flip's going to be heads, so it's going to copy it. The second flip is going to be tails, so it's going to go back to my hand. I'll use the Deflecting Swat to redirect Nature's Claim to Guy's Trace of Abundance. Then we flip for the counter spells. I'm going to flip first, and it's going to be tails. I'm going to flip for the second time, and it's going to be heads. I'll copy the counter spell, countering the scape shift, and put it back in my hand. With nothing else, Trigger will simply pass the turn to me, where I'll untap and draw my card for turn, and I'll tap for three mana to cast this Jessica's Will you're all probably getting very tired of. I'll trigger both of my Karks and flip. I'm going to get a Tails. I'll flip again, and this time I'll get a Heads. Because of my Twinning Staff, I'm going to make two copies of Jessica's Will. I'll get ten red mana, and then I will flip the top six cards of my library. From among those, there will be a Mana Crypt, so I will play the Mana Crypt for free. It comes into play tapped, we miss it, but don't worry, we catch it before it actually matters. After that, I'll shock and Steam Vents from among those exiled cards, and that triggers the Sire of Stagnation, so I'm going to exile the top two cards of my library. Foley is going to draw two cards, and when he draws those, he's going to choose me this time to start milling cards because he sees how the Jessica's Will is going to affect the game at this point. After that, I'm going to use some more of my red mana, in conjunction with the blue mana from one of my lands, to cast Ralzeric Storm Conduit. After this point, I'm going to minus two the Ralzeric so my next spell is copied, and then I'll use three more of my red mana in order to cast another Jessica's Will, which will automatically be copied by the Ralzeric. But we trigger both Krarks, so we do have to flip some coins. In response, Foley wants to use all of his creatures to use Phoenix to mill me for a grand total of 28, leaving me with very few cards left in my library. After this point, we'll actually trigger the Krarks, so I'll flip my first coin, and it's Tails, and I'll flip my second coin, which is a Heads. This means I'm going to copy my Jessica's Will a grand total of three times. We may have messed it up and done it four times here, but don't worry, we did the math. It does not wind up mattering one little bit. This will also have all my opponents taking a damage for each time I copied a spell. Then we will actually exile the cards using the Jessica's Will. After this point, I'm going to tap for a mana and use some of my floating mana to cast Spark Double. I want to copy my Sakashima of a Thousand Faces, that's copying Quark. Then we'll use some more red mana, and we want to cast Stitch in Time. 
This is gonna trigger Clark three times, so I'm gonna flip three coins, and I miserably fail getting heads for each flip. I have no more blue mana, so I can't do that again. So I'll cast Talisman of Creativity, which comes into play tap because of the blind obedience. So I'll use some more red mana, and this time I wanna cast Pyretic Ritual. Flipping, I'm gonna get a Tails, a Tails, and a Heads. This is gonna cause me to copy the Pyretic Ritual twice, and then it goes back to my hand. Each of my opponents takes some damage. Then we'll cast the Pyretic Ritual again using some more mana. We're gonna flip the coins and get a combination of heads and tails, putting the Pyretic Ritual back in my hand and copying it, causing my opponents to take even more damage. And at this point, I realize I have an Underworld Breach, so I'll just cast that to cast Clark's Thumb out of my graveyard. And at this point, I do have the Pyretic Ritual, an Underworld Breach, and a Clark's Thumb. This allows me to go functionally infinite and kill all of my opponents. All right, we got there with our Krark Sakashima Storm deck. Normally at the end of the video, we like to talk about how everyone's decks perform from the least impactful all the way up to the most impactful. However, I wanna do some damage control at the end here because I saw a lot of interactions in editing the game that weren't super, um, I feel like most people who play a lot of Commander or a lot of Magic in general maybe understood some of these interactions or some of these game decisions. And I feel like some newer players, and there are a lot of newer players that do watch the channel, um, that might be like, hey, why are you, or not even newer players, just less experienced commander players in general, are asking the questions like, hey, why was this play made? It seemed not very good. And um, at first glance, some of these plays didn't seem very good. Um, so just off the top of my head, I wanna go over some stuff. Uh, a, I wanna re-apologize for the Rune Crab plays. In editing, it was actually very difficult to um, continue to like, it was just hard. Every time I saw the Rune Crab, the landfall trigger and fully targeted with Rune Crab, um, we all made the mistake, we all missed it, but it happened. The first big one that I'd like to get to is why Calvin targeted Marari's Wake with the single target Cyclonic Rift, because it was weird. Um, for those of you who don't know how Zakama works, I kind of told you about it in the uh, intro opening hand segment, but it's a combo deck, and I'd like to go into a little bit more detail about how this combo works. Um, you got to get this land called Sanctum of Eternity, and that with Zakama and access to 13 mana doesn't win you the game, but it functionally makes it almost impossible to lose. You gain infinite life, and you can destroy almost every permanent, and you gain infinite mana on the spot. Guy casts the card Sylvan Scrying. Sylvan Scrying is almost always used in this deck to go gain access to the card Sanctum of Eternity, because that's the biggest combo piece. It's kind of like a Splinter Twin combo, like the old combo in Modern of Splinter Twin and um, Pestermite, only instead you've got one of those pieces in the command zone and the other one's a land, which you can tutor because you're in green, so it's super easy. Instead of getting the uh, aforementioned Sanctum of Eternity, he got the card, um, which one was it? Not Ancient Tomb but Temple of the False Gods. And this is a red flag to all of us because that means that he already had access to Sanctum of Eternities. It was either in his hand or he had another way to tutor for it and he wasn't ready to do it just yet. But that's why we started to target Guy so quickly. Even though it looked like I was ahead for a lot of the game because I did have Fierce Guardianship and Deflecting Swat for a lot of the game, plus both Quarks made it super easy for me to start to like infinitely cast cards like Fierce Guardianship and Deflecting Swat. There's an RNG to that. But with Guy's side of the battlefield, if he was allowed to on tap and play a Sanctum of Eternity, there was nothing anybody could do. It was 100%. We were pretty much just out of that game. Um, we all saw it, and we targeted him appropriately, and it stopped him from winning the game. I did win the game. Um, not a lot to talk about there. I guess I'll gush about it in a moment. But um, just a few other things, like the Blind Obedience. Try to pay attention to that, because we did miss the Blind Obedience a couple times. It never ended up mattering, but um, Blind Obedience is a really good magic card. And then other than that, the Jessica's Will interactions were really interesting, um, but I want to talk about the end of the game um, instead of just wrapping up the whole game because there was a lot of stuff that happened. But um, I feel like most of it was obvious. Foley's deck was really cool. Guy's deck did what Guy's deck did. You guys have seen Trigger's deck, the Shape of Water is what he calls it. Um, it's a landfall deck, and if it gets off the ground, it's very hard to stop. But this Clark Sakashima deck is very interesting. At the end of the game, I was able to kind of storm off. And it was all because of the card Underworld Breach. But there's a lot of ways to set this up. But I want to explain exactly how I won for anyone who isn't in the know of how this kind of soft combo works. I have access to three Quarks at this point. Meaning every time I cast my Pyretic Ritual, which is what I was using at the end of the game, I have a chance to either copy it X amount of times or put it back in my hand. Now the goal is to get some combination of heads and tails, but never to roll all heads because that'll put it in the graveyard. In this case, it didn't matter if it went to the graveyard because we had the card Underworld Breach, which allows us to start to cast it out of the graveyard. 
and then we have Kark's Thumb. And Kark's Thumb's interesting because when we cast our Pyretic Ritual, that's going to trigger all three of our, uh, what do you call them, the Sakashimas that are copying Kark. What happens then is we flip a coin each time. But we actually flip two coins each time and pick the flip that we like. This, on its own, will probably allow us to win the game using Rail Storm Conduit's tr uh, passive ability, his uh, static ability. But because we have Underworld Breach, it's all but guaranteed. And I showed them the Seething Song in my hand. There was literally, if there's a percentage chance I didn't go off there, it's so low that it was not worth spending the extra 10 minutes we need to spend to manually execute it. But if you guys want to see something like that manually executed all the way to the bitter end, let me know in the, the comments below. And that's all I have for you guys. Um, let me know if you like this... If some of you newer players or less experienced players like this kind of dive into some of the more nuanced interactions at the end of the game, I felt like this was a good game to do that in because this game went really well for most people. Um, we could have talked about how everyone's deck performed, but at the end of the day, I think everyone's deck did kind of what they designed it to do. That's all I have for you guys. A little extra treat for anyone who stayed till the end. I already told you at the beginning of the video, but we are doing a live stream. And um, since you're one of those people that watched the end of the video, if there's a deck you've seen on this channel that you really want to see in the live stream that's going to happen on Sunday around noon Eastern time, drop it in the uh, comments below. Let us know what decks you want to see because I have to prepare some media ahead of time. That's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, see you next time.